All right, welcome again, Southern California Prep Insider Baseball Podcast. Tommy and Les, live and in person this time. Shocker. This is the Division <laughs> 2 podcast. Again, we have podcasts for all three of the top divisions. Make sure you watch all of them. If you don't see your division, then it's probably the wrong video. Check it out, but watch this one anyway. Even if it's not, just get the extra information. Division 2, first game, Village Christian at Beckman. Yeah, Beckman's going to face the Valley Christian. and they I mean, they should roll. Trevor Hearn has been really good for the Patriots on the mound. While all three McLean brothers are hitting over 340. Um, you know, they, they, Matt gets a lot of the attention, rightfully so. UCLA signee, MLB draft prospect. But the two brothers are playing really well. Their offense is, is just more than a one-man show, obviously. Look for the Patriots to roll in this one. Um, yeah, I'll agree with you. Uh, they're bringing number eight in the state, but Max perhaps a really good team. Again, probably a team that should be Division One, but the way things work, they're stuck in D2. Uh, next, Redondo Union at Rio Mesa. Yeah, Redondo is really loaded both on the mound at the plate. Jake Thaw and Andrew Dahlquist give the Seahawks a really good one-two punch. Uh, you know, they also have postseason experience. Rio Mesa comes in in 357 as a team, really good offensively, but this will be the best pitching staff they face all year. In the end, I think Thaw is going to be too much for them on the mound. Redondo moves on. I'm going to go Rio Mesa here. Austin Messiel hitting 463. Daniel Cabral hitting 420 with 25 RBIs. Christian Herrera hitting 400, two home runs, 30 RBIs. And uh, Brent Jacquez with a .97 ERA, so he'll probably be throwing for them. It's going to be a good game either way, but I've got uh, Rio Mesa next. We have Troy at Quartz Hill. Yeah, Quartz Hill's rolling. You know, they were perfect through the Golden League and route to the title. Troy finished second in the Freeway League, and they have to hop on a bus for an hour and a half <laughs> ride up into Quartz Hill. You know, I just think Quartz Hill's going to have too much on the mound. Having seen Troy a little bit earlier, I think the pitching for Quartz Hill is going to dominate here. I don't know. Carson Palmer for, for Troy, .64 ERA. Again, it's one game, not a series, so I... I think they got a shot here, but I'm going to take Quartz Hill, uh, Dawson Diamond, uh, hitting 395, four home runs, 34 RBIs, going to San Diego State next year. I, it will be a close game, though. This will be a, this will be a low-scoring one. Uh, next, Damian at Calabasas. Yeah, I've got Damian in this one here with, with the Barrera brothers. Diego Barrera probably on the bump. They just they've got their hearts ripped out from them last week against Atawanda. But I think Damian's just going to be too much for Calabasas, both offensively and with the pitching. Yeah, again, I'll go Damian as well. Second place in the baseline league, as you mentioned. And next, we've got Kaiser at Sierra Canyon. Sierra Canyon comes in on a 20-game win streak, <laughs> including a, a blowout win of a good Chatsworth team a couple weeks or last week. Kaiser's offense is really good. They've got four guys hitting over 400. Team ERA of just over two, but I think Sierra Canyon's got the pitching and the offense to take care of business in this one. I'm going to go with the upset here. I'll take Kaiser. Leonardo Rodriguez hitting 474 with 26 RBIs for them. Ignacio Alvarez hitting 403, and he's only a freshman. That's the name you'll be hearing for a little while. And Art Mejia is uh, gonna, probably going to be pitching with a 196 ERA, so 92 record. Again, it'll be a close one, but uh, I think I've got Kaiser here. Next, I've got uh, Taquiz in uh, Laguna Beach. Yeah, Grady Morgan and Cutter Clausen of Laguna Beach have had great season for the Breakers who are deep and they're ready to make a run. Coach Sears has got that program humming once again. Tockwitz is playing good ball, winners of five straight. All things being equal here, I like Laguna Beach at home with their talent. Yeah, Tockwitz, the uh, defending Division Four champions have to make a huge step up here in Division Two, but I got Laguna Beach as well. Uh, Marietta Valley at Milliken. Yeah, this to me is the game of the day in D2. Milliken won the top more league. Well, Marietta Valley uh, and their bevy of D1 commits uh, came in second place in the Southwestern League. Christian Yogi is a sophomore shortstop for Milligan. That'll be a highly sought after recruit. I mean, in fact, he already is. Won the MVP of the league after a huge season. Meanwhile, uh, Murrieta Valley has eight regulars hitting over 300, led by uh, a Drew D'Ambra and his 395 average. This could turn into a slugfest, in which case Murrieta Valley has the advantage. So I'm going to go with the Nighthawks in this one. Oh, I'm going to go Milligan. More league champions. I don't know. I, I, like, I like the league championship there. Uh, next, we have Santa Barbara at Camarillo. Santa Barbara is going to be really good. We talked about them a little bit the other day with, you know, behind the Warwicker kid. Uh, Coach Warwick has just done a really good pro job with that program. Camarillo scuffled a little bit uh, there in their league, but it should be a really good game. I'm going to go with Santa Barbara. I'll go Camarillo. The only issue for Santa Barbara is they had to use their number one guy already to, to get out of the wild card. Uh, that is Chavez True. So I will go with Camarillo here. They're ranked 38th in the state by Max Preps, and I, I trust those rankings. Not fully, but I trust those a little bit. Uh, Glendora at Ukaipa. Yeah, Glendora is going to run into a buzzsaw here against Ukaipa. Ukaipa is a really good team. They should have Tyson Heaton on the mound. For Glendora, expect to see Bryce Wooldridge and that offense really step up here. I think they're going to throw Adam Armstrong against Ukaipa, but Ukaipa and their five D1 commits in that lineup are just going to be too much at home. 
I agree with you. Uh, another guy, Michael Carpent Carpentier, uh, hitting 365 with three home runs, 32 RBIs. So you kind of we mentioned it during the uh, the wild card podcast. They're kind of a buzz saw, so yeah. tough tough to get through. Uh, Corona Del Mar at Woodcrest Christian. Yeah, Bryce, Brett Finnell, excuse me, a senior right-handed pitcher, Woodcrest Christian is exploding on the scene for the MLB scouts. He's touching 94 this spring. <laughs> Uh, he has been lights out for them, paired with the offense of Woodcrest Christian hands with Brandon Bossier uh, and, and the other guys there. They're going to be tough to beat. CDM, I've seen them a few times. They've struggled against really good pitching this season, but the Sea Kings, they do have really good pitching of their own and a really potent offense. This could be a really good game, but I think Woodcrest Christian in the end has a little bit, just a little bit too much for them. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a tough one too. I, they got a guy with a great name, Tommy Wilcox, going to Tennessee at CDM, but he'll probably pitch. He's got four shutouts already this season. Wilkers Christian, that was a completely different animal. You know, they got they got guys all over the place that can hit the ball. Uh, next, we got Fountain Valley at Canyon. Two good OC teams and programs getting after it. I would anticipate that Canyon is going to throw Troy Melton, who is a San Diego State commit, while Fountain Valley will throw one of their two aces, both D1 guys. The separator for me in this one is the offenses, and I think Fountain Valley has the advantage there, led by super soft Sebastian Murillo, an Arizona commit. Kid's just an absolute hitting machine. So I'm going to go Fountain Valley here. I'll go Fountain Valley. I'm going to go with, oh, sorry, I'm going to go with uh, Canyon, actually. I'm going to go with Canyon on this one. I'll, next, we got Lakewood at Crescenta Valley. Seth Beer gives Crescenta Valley a chance every time uh, he takes the mound. The Falcons are coming off uh, you know, per two really big wins against Arcadia last week to win their league and clinch their third straight Pacific League title. Lakewood is young and talented. They've been really inconsistent. They lost three or four to close out the regular season. Being at home with beer on the mound, I'm going to go with the Falcons in this one. I'll go with the Falcons too. A perfect 14-0 in that Pacific League in order to get that league championships next is Alamany and El Segundo. There are a few hotter teams in D2. Playoffs coming into the postseason than Alamany. Uh, out of the Mission League where they finished tied for second. Their offense has been really, really good of late uh, against really good pitching. Noah Cardenas, a UCLA commit, is having a huge year, hitting 444. El Segundo is pitching at a really high level, 194 team ERA, led by senior uh, Jaime Galicia with his point, or point .97 ERA. But he's 6-4, and four, so that ought to give you an indication about their offense. So I'm going to go with Alamany in this one. I'm going to go with Alamany, too. Probably a Blake uh, Traxel throwing. He's got a 1-290 ERA. He's throwing six complete games. In the playoffs, if you can get a complete game out of your starter, that is amazing because you got to save as much pitching as possible. Next, we've got Simi Valley at St. Bonaventure. Uh, Owen Charts gives Simi Valley a chance every time. He's really tough to beat on the mound. Nevada commit is just, he's just a really good pitcher is another way to put it. The offense has been pretty solid for them too. Seraphs come in winners of 11 in a row, but they haven't seen this type of pitching during that streak, so I'm going to go with Simi Valley. I'm going to go with St. Bonaventure, just the hot hand, the 11-1 game winning streak. Let's see if they can make it 12. Uh, next, I've got Ayala at Don Lugo. Yeah, this is a battle of two schools separated only by a couple of miles on the IE, who are very familiar with each other. Ayala has recovered nicely after suffering some key injuries uh, to finish second place in the Palomares League. They also have the experience of deep playoff runs over the last few years. Don Lugo comes in winners three of four, including some close games that could have gone either way. This will be a step up for Don Lugo, in my opinion. I just think Ayala has too much on the mound for them. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ayala as well. they got a freshman, Cole K, hitting 458. Two home runs, 23 RBIs. Again, a kid you're going to hear about for the next few years. Uh, final game, D2. It's Tustin at Tesoro. Yeah, again, another matchup of two Orange County teams. Tustin got the big win yesterday against El Medina. Tesoro has had a really strong year. Their lineup, one through nine, is really good. I'd expect Tesoro to take a handle business at home. Yeah, and I'll agree with you there. I, the biggest misadvantage or disadvantage, I think, like in any sort of high school sport is we have to throw your number two guy versus the number one, which is going to happen. So yeah. it's always tough getting out of that wild card. That's Division Two. We still have Division One coming. Again, all these videos are going to be separate. Watch them all. Learn a lot. Have fun with it. See you in Division One. Yep. All right. <laughs>